me show you how you can test an Infusionsoft campaign. So this is a question that a lot of people run into because it's a very natural request and Infusionsoft doesn't have a, a super obvious or elegant solution for that uh, process. So here I have a simple campaign. It starts with a sign up, um, and then I deliver some content, a couple emails over a period of a few days. Um, and then if they click the link in the last email, it follows up with them twice just to see if they have any questions. And obviously all of this is set up to stop when they get the customer tag. So uh, just a standard opt-in. Um, if they engage, we're following up with them with like a little, a little nudge action. And then if they purchase, um, they become a customer. So here is how I would test this. Uh, the first thing you need to do is publish the campaign. Anything you want to test will need to be uh, in the published mode. Uh, and then you want to just basically add yourself to this campaign by achieving that first goal. Uh, so let's go ahead and opt in through that form. Uh, we'll call it, uh, you know, test contact. And here's a little trick. So if you use your own email address, right, uh, you can add an extension onto the end of this. So let's do uh, Greg at plus test one uh, at monkeypodmarketing.com. Um, so the normal email would just be greg at monkeypodmarketing.com, but by adding plus test one, uh, it allows me to create a unique email address and therefore a unique contact. Um, and then that'll make it easier for us to identify or to just kind of track uh, that contact's process or, or progress rather through the campaign. So uh, let's go ahead and find that contact here. So we're going to just pop in the search right here and open that contact record up. So here on the testing campaign, um, I have now submitted that initial web form. So if we refresh, we should see one contact in here. So that'll be this guy, test contact. And to kind of track the progress and make sure everything is working the way we would expect, uh, we hop over here to the campaigns tab. You can see the recent campaign history, the things that were set to happen right away have all happened. So at 2.52 PM, I filled out that form, uh, we got the email and the note was applied and the tag was applied. So those are the first three steps here in that sequence. Those all happened. And now you can see that contact is waiting one day. So at 8 a.m. tomorrow, email two should be scheduled. So um, down here in the upcoming items, uh, I know that today is the 29th. So tomorrow, uh, the 30th at 8 a.m., that email is scheduled, okay? Um, you can also see uh, that the tag and the note were applied because if we jump over here to the notes section, right, there it is. And if we jump over here to the tags section, uh, there's the tag as well. Now, uh, I use List Cleaner um, and it has identified that this is indeed a fishy contact. So that's mm -hmm. probably why uh, you're getting that message there. So uh, when you uh, have verified that the initial actions have run, um, and that the, the upcoming items have been scheduled appropriately. So the 30th and the 31st, those are tomorrow and the next day, uh, both set for 8 a.m. That all looks good. Then you can manually process any upcoming steps just to let them run through to see how those emails look when they hit your inbox. Let's go ahead and push both of those through. So emails two and three are currently being sent by the system. So this is what email three looks like here. Uh, hello, test contact email three and a test link. So there's that email and there's that link. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and click this link. And then over here, um, we should expect the contact to move from this sequence to this uh, sequence. Because uh, back here on this page, this link clicked goal is tracking the link in email three. So the link that you guys just saw me click should be responsible for moving me forward in the campaign. You can see that has happened. So I've gone from the deliver content sequence over here to the questions sequence. So back over on this page, what we wanna do is make sure that the appropriate steps for the questions sequence have been scheduled as well. So let's go ahead and refresh this. And um, on the con contacts campaigns tab, we should see, yeah, in the recent history, those emails were sent, we processed those manually. I did click that link. Um, and then now we have questions scheduled for tomorrow at 8.15 a.m. And then a few days later, take two, uh, the second follow-up in that sequence. Um, now you could manually process these emails if you want them to come through to your inbox and you wanna see how they look. Uh, but you also 
you might want to test um, outcomes. So, for example, if this customer tag is applied, those two emails should be voided. They should not be sent out and the contact should be removed from the sequence because they have achieved a goal downstream. Okay, so we know that because this sequence is set to uh, stop immediately when a goal is achieved. As soon as I apply that, um, that customer tag, the, the contact should be drawn out of that sequence. So let's go ahead and do that manually. And um, that would, you know, in, in, a, in a real life environment, that would be applied because somebody purchased um, or, you know, for any number of indicators, uh, an API connection or, or maybe a subscription payment, that sort of thing. But as soon as we apply it manually, in this case, uh, we should see over here, those upcoming items are stopped. So let's refresh this. There you go. The contact is now out of the sequence. And if we refresh this, I expect those upcoming items will be gone as well. Um, yeah, so they're gone and it looks like it has triggered a different campaign for some of my reporting. Uh, but you can see here in the recent campaign history, uh, removed from sequence. So as soon as that goal was achieved, this contact was removed from that sequence. So to me, the easiest way to test your campaigns is just to simulate what a contact would experience as they go through there. Um, you'll encounter some people who, who recommend um, reducing all of these timers down to you know one minute or, or five minute increments um, just so that you can add yourself to this campaign and, and you can let those things all uh, process. Personally, um, I don't I don't encourage that. I don't think that's necessarily the easiest way. I don't find a lot of benefit in reducing those timers uh, because what would happen is when you look at your contact record, you wouldn't necessarily be able to verify that the steps were scheduled appropriately. Part of the testing is you want to make sure that the emails are at an appropriate flow. You don't have too many emails within a small period of time. And if you reduce all of the timers to a five minute increment, well, then you're not able to test the cadence or flow of the campaign. Uh, so by leaving, and I'm gonna go ahead and revert those changes. So by leaving the timers to be one day or whatever the actual increment is, it gives you the ability to see on the contact record, have those steps scheduled the way we expected. Uh, because you know, once in a while you'll find that if you're using complex timers or complex logic, uh, you, know, you get a little, little turned around and uh, it's useful to see it laid out in a linear path the way your contact would experience that. So that is how I test campaigns. Uh, hopefully this is a resource that can give you a little bit of confidence in the way your campaigns are performing. Later.